What if someone you're supporting, caring for, working with is suicidal right now, they're in crisis, and the buck stops with you because you're there with them? What do you do? So the first thing is, can you move to a place of safety? So that might be physically moving them away from the place from which they intend to take their own life, or it might be proactively moving them to a place that is safer. So that might be a place where there are people, often we're safer when we've got people around us, or you might be proactively taking them somewhere like accident and emergency. That's not always gonna be possible and we can't always do that right away, but that should be an aim that we have in mind, is trying to move either away from danger or towards safety. So that's a really nice aim to have. Next, don't leave them alone. If someone's in crisis, do not leave them alone. Stick with them like glue. If you need extra help, call it to you or go to it with them. Do not ever leave this person alone. As soon as you break that connection, they are much, much more at risk than if you stay with them. However bad a job you might feel like you're doing of this, being there, connecting with them is keeping them here and safer. Okay, next. And this is really tough. They are in a state of overwhelm and crisis and we need to try and calm that down. Physiologically, they will be like, you know, everything's firing, they're very, very anxious, very, very kind of high energy, lots of adrenaline running, perhaps breathing is really kind of getting out of control. You might be able to see and hear all this. What you need to do is to try and calm things down. And the first way of doing that is to start with yourself. So you find yourself in this situation, oh my goodness, my friend, my colleague, my student is suicidal, I'm panicking, I'm freaking out, my breathing is also going to speed up, I'm going to get faster in my talking and it's going to get larger and higher, ah! Okay, you feel like that in here? We need to try and convey calm. What the person who is suicidal needs right now is for you to be in control of this situation, for you to be calm, okay? So we fake it, we think about our breathing, we slow it down. We think about our speaking, we slow it down. We use our slow, low, low talking, so we slow down the speed, we lower the tone, we lower the volume to make us sound calm and in control. We're looking here to be supportive, assertive, calm. When we proactively try and think about our breathing and our movement and our in enacting that calm and control and supportive body language and talking and breathing, actually we begin to trick our own body and we will begin to calm a little as well, but also we're able to do what we call co-regulation. So actually they will begin to reflect our calm as well. It will take a while, but it will begin to happen. If on the other hand, we're very anxious and very high energy, they will bounce off that and this will make us both get more anxious. So try best acting skills to be calm. Yeah, so you have to sometimes have to give yourself a bit of a talking to it. Right, okay, let's get this together. This is what they need me to do right now. Remember. Next, care out loud. Let the person who you're with know that you care about them, know that you're here for them, know that you're gonna keep them safe. Say out loud the things that you're doing. Acknowledge that they matter to you, that you want them to be okay. This will begin to penetrate a little bit and help them start to question some of that narrative that might be going around and around and around in their head. Don't worry if you feel like you're repeating yourself. Just continue to do this out loud. Let them know exactly what you're thinking, what you're doing. Remind them that you care. Different people need different things in this situation, but generally for me, I would be trying to keep that person connecting and communicating. Every interaction that they're having is one that is strengthening the, the need to stay, to connect with me. It's another few seconds when they're here with us and safe and we're giving their body just a little bit more time to overcome that crisis moment. So try to keep them talking, keep them connecting, listen to what they have to say. Sometimes it can be helpful to think about distracting them. So you might try and think about different things, get them talking about a different topic, something really easy. If it's someone you know, and you know that they have something that they will often talk about at length, get them talking about that. Equally, things like animals, anything really, any topic that comes to mind. You might have a picture on your phone that you can share, or you might have a memory that you have in common with this person that you can begin to explore. And it might feel really superficial, these topics, compared to the 
gravity of the situation right now but what we're looking to do is to try and remove ourselves from these very very difficult thoughts and feelings that are just too much for this person to bear right now and to think about anything else and to try to kind of diffuse this moment this feeling you're basically just trying to buy time. So when someone is suicidal, they will only maintain this very, very overwhelmed feeling for so long and, and gradually this crisis moment will begin to pass if we can just buy a minute at a time. So it almost doesn't matter how you do it. You could talk them through any kind of breathing or grounding technique that you're aware of, anything that you can bring to mind that helps you to continue to connect with them and keeps them talking or focusing in on this connection with you whilst you perhaps wait for the situation to begin to feel more safe or for other help to arrive or to get to a point where you can move to a place of safety or away from harm after the crisis has passed then it can be really really helpful to encourage the person that you were supporting to write a safety plan that might be something they do with you it might be something they do with a trusted other it might be something they do on their own but it's a really really helpful thing and you can use a safety plan if a moment like this were to arise again to know how best to help them because then they will have planned ahead for these moments a really great tool for suicide safety planning is stayingsafe.net which is an NHS funded website and you can either download a blank safety plan that you can complete or you can actually complete the safety plan online and then print it out and it shares loads of different ideas for populating that plan so you don't have to start completely from nothing so I'd really recommend that. Be forgiving of yourself you will not feel like you got this right but actually this is about muddling through, about being brave, about running towards that distress and keeping someone safe just long enough that we're able then to move on and think about the medium and the long-term safety for them. You're just getting through one minute at a time, however you can. Good luck. I'd really love to hear your ideas and experience as well, either of being helped or of helping someone. Leave them in a comment down below. Lots of people will read the comments and use those ideas too, so please add to what I've said with your own ideas. I hope this was helpful. Please do subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.